guys. Let's continue our reading. The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, Chapter 22, The Country of the Quadlings. Let's begin. The four travelers passed through the rest of the forest in safety, and when they came out from its gloom, and when they came out from its gloom, saw before them a sleepy, steep hill covered from top to bottom with great pieces of rock. That will be a hard climb, said the scarecrow, but we must get over the hill nevertheless. So he led the way and the others followed. They had nearly reached the first rock when they heard when they heard a rough voice cry out, Keep back! Who are you? asked the scarecrow. Then a head showed itself over the rock, and the same voice said, This hill belongs to us, and we don't allow anyone to cross it. But you must cross it, said the scarecrow. We're going to the country of the quadlings. But you shall not, replied the voice. And there, st and there stepped from behind the rock the strangest man the travelers had ever seen. He was quite short and stout, and had a big head, which was flat at the top and was supported by a thick neck full of wrinkles. But he had no arms at all, and, seeing this, the scarecrow did not fear that so helpless a creature could prevent them from climbing the hill. So he said, I'm sorry not to do as you wish, but you must pass over your hill whether you like it or not. And he walked boldly forward. As quick as lightning, the man's head shot forward and his neck stretched out until the top of the head, where he was flat, where he was flat, he struck the scarecrow in the middle and sent, his, and sent him tumbling over and over down the hill. Almost as quickly as he came, the, the head went back to the body, and the man laughed harshly as he said, It isn't as easy as you think. A chorus of boisterous laughter came from the other rocks, and Dorothy saw hundreds of armless hammerheads up up on the hillside, one behind one behind every rock. The lion became quite angry at the laughter caused by the scarecrow's mishap, and giving a loud roar that echoed like thunder, he dashed up the hill. Again, a head shot swiftly out, and the great lion went rolling down the hill as if it had been struck by a cannonball. Dorothy ran down and helped the scarecrow to his feet, and the lion came up to her, feeling rather bruised and sore, and said, It is useless to fight people with shooting heads. No one can withstand them. What can we do then? she asked. Call the winged monkeys, suggested the tin woodman. You have still the right to command them once more. Very well, she answered, and in putting the golden cap, she uttered the magical words. The monkey wore as prompt as ever, and in a few moments, the entire band stood before her. What are your commands? inquired the king of the monkeys, bowing low. Carry us over the hill to the country of the quadlings, answered the girl. It shall be done, and said the king, and at once, the winged monkeys caught the four travelers and Toto up in their arms and flew away with them. As they passed over their hill, the hammerheads yelled vex vexation and shot their heads high in the air, but they could not reach the winged monkeys, which carried Dorothy and her comrades, comrades safely over the hill and sat them down and sat them down in the beautiful country of the quadrants. This is the last time you can summon us, said the, letter, said the leader to Dorothy. So goodbye and good luck to you. Goodbye and thank you very much, returned the girl. And the monkeys rose into the air and were out of sight in a twinkling. The country of the quadlings seemed rich and happy. There, were, there was field upon field and ripening grain, with well-paved roads running between and pretty rippling bro brooks with strong bridges across them. The fences and houses and bridges were all painted bright red, just as they had painted the yellow in the country of the Winkies and blue in the country of the Munchkins. And no, no, no it's not, it was not green in the Emerald City. 
He was chosen in the ocean. In his ocean. The quadrants themselves, who were short and fat and looked chubby in good nature, were dressed all in red, which showed right against the green grass and the yellow, yellowing grain. The monkeys had set them down near a farmhouse, and the four travelers walked up to it and knocked at the door. It was opened by the farmer's wife, and when Dorothy asked for something to eat, the, om the woman gave them all a good dinner, with th three kinds of cake and four kinds of cookies, and a bo bowl of milk for Toto. How far, is, how, far, how far is it to the castle of Glinda? asked the child. It is not a great way. It is not a great way, answered the farmer's wife. Take the road to the south, and you will soon reach it. Thanking the, good, thanking the good woman, they started afresh and walked by the fields and across the pretty bridges until they saw before them a very beautiful castle. Before the gates were three young girls dressed in handsome red uniforms, trimmed with gold braid. And as Dorothy approached, one of them said to her, Why have you come to the south country to see the good wit who rose here? She answered, Will you take me to her? Let me have your name, and I will ask Linda if she will receive you. They told you, they told you who they were, and the girl soldier went, to the, went into the castle. After a few moments, she came back to say that Dorothy and the others were to be admitted at once. And this, my friends, is the end of chapter 22. I was wrong. The Tim Woodman uh, the Tim Woodman will not be the leader of that of that the city of the men in with no arms and f flying heads throwing throwing heads but nevertheless tomorrow we're going to read the probably the last chapter of this book. Until then, bye.